be able to check it out there. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Kenzie. All right, thank you very much. Um, before I get started into all of the details of what dual credit is, why it might make sense for you to do a dual credit, how the whole process of applying and um, being accepted and enrolling in classes works, we're going to have a quick introduction from Dr. Lindsay Moore, who is the director of dual credit at Calm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kenzie, and thank you, um, Giovanna, Ms. James, for allowing us to um, offer this information session for Plano Senior High students. Um, my name is Dr. Lindsay Moore, and I am the Director of Dual Credit here at the Plano campus, and we are so excited and grateful to have you and your students in our Dual Credit program. Um, just a couple of quick fun statistics for you. Um, since 2016, we have actually had 6,706 students from Plano ISD participate in our dual credit program at Collin. And every semester we have a few more and we're so excited to continue our partnership with Plano ISD and with Plano Senior High. Um, if you have any questions about our program, you can certainly reach out to me or to Ms. Lopez, um, or of course to Ms. James, and we're happy to answer anything for you. And thank you again so much for coming. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Moore. Um, so I was already introduced. My name is Kenzie Lopez. I am the College and Career Counselor at Plano Senior High School from Collin. So I work for Collin, but I'm at Plano Senior pretty much every day of the week to um, help our students there, especially with the dual credit program. So we'll go ahead and get started, tell you a little bit more about dual credit. So what is dual credit? You may have heard that before and you're not exactly sure the origin of it or what it exactly means. Um, so dual credit is a college course that you can take while you're still in high school and you simultaneously earn both high school credit and college credit for taking just one class. So that's where the dual comes in there, right? Um, you get the high school credit and the college credit at the same time. Um, sometimes we have questions about the difference between dual credit and concurrent enrollment. Those are both taking high school classes while you're still, or sorry, college classes while you're still in high school. Dual credit, again, you get both credit for high school and for the college class. For concurrent enrollment classes, you only get credit for college. That goes on your college transcripts, okay? So some of the benefits of being a dual credit student with Colin. So again, the courses can count towards both high school and concurrent, or sorry, high school and college credit for your transcripts. Um, you have smaller class sizes. So a lot of our um, dual credit classes that we have are general classes that no matter what major you pick in college or what path you're pursuing after high school, um, you'll probably have to take that class no matter what, no matter where you go or what field you're studying. So a lot of bigger universities or colleges, those classes have an upwards of 100, 200, 300 people in the class. And that can make it really difficult to ask questions or get to know your professor or the other students in your class as well. Um, so our average class size, I believe, is about 22 students. And um, that helps you, again, get that one-on-one -on -one attention and um, access to your professor and to the other students that may benefit you. Um, you also get educational support from Collin College instructors and support services. So as a dual credit student, you're considered 100% a real college student for, for Collin's purposes. So you have access to all of the same resources that any other student at Collin does. We'll talk more about those resources specifically at the end. Um, you also get the experience of being in a college environment and the rigor of a college course. Sometimes it might be a little bit nerve wracking thinking about the difference or what the differences might be when you take college or university classes in the future, um, how that might be different. And it could feel a little bit overwhelming even 
So uh, this is a great experience to kind of get used to that and to see, I'll have a little taste of uh, how the different teaching styles might be in a college class versus your high school classes that you've taken or other classes that you've taken before. So it's a good uh, experience to kind of help you get used to that rigor as well. Um, you also get to start your college transcript. So because the courses that you take for dual credit count uh, for college credit and your high school credit, you're going to get that grade on your high school transcript. And whatever grade you get in the class is also going to go on your college transcript. So no matter where you decide to go in the future, be it Colin or another university or another college, um, you're still going to have that grade from dual credit and any credit that you get for the classes that you took in dual credit wherever you go. And that will be on your transcript. So you can also, um, depending on when you start taking dual credit or AP classes combined with dual credit classes, it's possible for some students to earn uh, an associate's degree upon graduation from high school or a professional certificate. We have our industries programs offered to our students at, in the uh, Plano ISD that they can take, and you can get a whole professional certificate for completing those programs. Again, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. And also the cost savings. So let's talk a little bit more about the cost savings specifically. Um, on our next slide here, we will have a breakdown of kind of the difference in price that Colin has compared to other universities. So last semester, at UND, UTD, sorry, at UTD, it was about $2,800 to take a single three credit hour class. So credit hours, that just is about how much um, time you're in, it's based on how much time you're investing and the difficulty of the class that you're taking. So for one class that gave you three credit hours, it costs about $2,800. At UNT, uh, it was about $1,400 to take one class that counted for three credit hours. And at Colin College, it was $186. So that is a fraction of the cost for exactly the same class and exactly the same number of credits. Um, and that's for in-county residents. So we'll see on the next slide, just because the cost is lower does not mean that it is a lower quality class or that the class is any different at all. Uh, the credit that you get for the dual credit classes that you take are transferable to most public colleges and universities in the state of Texas. So if you already know you are, are thinking about even, you don't have to know for sure, but if you're thinking that you might want to stay in state and go to a college or school in Texas, especially one of those public colleges, the classes and the credit that you get through dual credit are going to transfer almost perfectly to most of those. Um, if you're not sure where you want to go yet, uh, or you know you want to go to a private school or an out-of-state school, just know that sometimes that credit, that dual credit, um, credit that you get for taking the class, it can still transfer. Your college or university may still accept those credits and give you a uh, college credit for completing that work, but you have to check individually with those private and out of state universities and colleges to see how they'll accept that credit. All right, let's talk about some details. What's dual credit all about? So dual credit, we've talked about some of the benefits. It can be a really beneficial, really awesome opportunity again, to um, help jumpstart you on your higher education career. Uh, but it's not right for everyone and that's okay, that's totally fine. So how do you determine, how do you decide if dual credit is right for you? Here's some ways that um, you might wanna think about to see if it's a good option for you. So first we wanna talk about the importance of attendance and time management. So you have to show up, of course, just like your high school classes and other classes that you've taken, you need to show up to be successful, right? Um, your college professors may take points away from you if you're tardy or if you do not attend their class. Participation may be part of the grade in the class. That might be something that's different for you. Um, there's a student code of conduct. So the Collins student code of conduct is the rules 
and expectations that Colin has for all of its students to be respectful and to work hard in school and in your classes and things like that. I'm sure nothing crazy or like very different um, compared to what you have already experienced in high school as expectations. Um, but as far as plagiarism goes and other rules like that, that may be slightly different. So all students are expected to um, behave in a respectful manner and any disciplinary action that needs to take place in a dual credit class is handled by the college. Uh, drop and withdraw deadlines. So that kind of goes back to that time management. Uh, dual credit can be a lot of work. It might be even more rigorous or even more difficult than you were expecting it to. And maybe you decide after, you know, about a weekend, you say, oh, this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be or something else comes up. Um, and you decide maybe this is too much with all the other extracurriculars that I have going on or with other life events that are going on for me. So it's really important to pay attention to the deadlines and the dates, the important dates that Colin has. Those might be different or completely separate. In most cases, they are completely separate from your other high school or school district dates and deadlines. So it's important to pay attention to those. Um, you can drop the class within the first couple weeks of classes starting, but there are consequences to that and also from withdrawing. So those are important dates and deadlines to remember, um, and you'll want to make sure that you keep up with those just in case. So maturity for subject matter and the college classroom environment. So your professors um, have a lot of academic freedom in terms of how they teach your class. It might be a lot more independent work and learning than you're used to from other college or sorry, other high school classes that you've taken before. Um, and you need to be very mature and ready to uh, be able to work independently if needed or if that's part of your professor's teaching style. Um, so that takes some maturity and then also that helps you get used to other college classes and professors who might teach that way in the future as well. Um, it's also really important to get to know your course syllabus and your instructor. This is a really great college tip. Um, it's kind of an expectation and unspoken, sometimes spoken, sometimes unspoken uh, expectation that you're going to read the course syllabus for every class that you attend and sign up for. Um, in college, the syllabus has all of the rules and expectations that your professor has for a class. Most of the time it will have all of the assignments and important, some important deadlines and dates and things like that listed in the syllabus. Um, and your professor may or may not remind you of those dates in class or on your Canvas page where your coursework is. Um, and it's up to you to be responsible and to have looked at the syllabus and review it every once in a while, and make sure you're aware of any dates or deadlines in classroom expectations that that professor might have. Okay, so I won't read every one of these. Again, we'll have a recording of this available and I'm always happy to share it with you if you would like it, you can email it out. Uh, but these are just some of the differences, again, between high school and the different classes you've taken in high school, how those expectations and formats might be compared to the college classes and the college experience. So some of those differences of um, the independence and again, the maturity and time management skills. Some of those are highlighted here. All right, one important, very important difference of dual credit classes, even compared to AP classes and definitely other high school classes that you've taken is we have uh, something called FERPA and that is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. So FERPA is kind of similar to the HIPAA law, if you've ever heard of that in the medical field. So I could not go up to your personal doctor and say, hey doctor, I know that this person comes to see you and I saw that they were here last week. What'd they come for? Could you tell me more about that? How were their lab results? How were their test results? What were they? What were, what were the scores there? Of course, that is a huge violation 
that your doctor could never tell me, right? They could never answer those questions for me if I just went and asked them. So FERPA is similar to that for academics. It ensures the privacy of student educational records. And that begins when a student starts college, regardless of how old they are. So like I mentioned at the beginning, when you start a dual credit course, Colin considers you to be a real college student um, for the purposes of that course, right? So Colin College and its representatives and employees cannot share grades or schedules or attendance or test scores or anything like that with the parents of students who are in these dual credit classes. So that's another reason it's really important to kind of test those uh, responsibility skills and the independent skills, right? Um, it's a great opportunity to learn how to take on those new responsibilities of being more independent as an older student. Uh, so students will need to use their call and email address for communication with instructors. That's part of FERPA helps keep their information safe. Uh, we do have a waiver if you just really, really, really find that it's not working or you need more access. There is a FERPA waiver that your student can sign and they can put your information and you can get more information about um, their class, their classes and things like that, class information, record information. Um, but I would really encourage you to let them give it a shot at first and see how things go of doing the dual credit class on their own without following up with the professors. All right, eligibility. So if you thought about these things that we've talked about and you've decided these are definitely some benefits that you would like to take advantage of and a good opportunity and it makes sense for you and your goals, then there's some things, um, some criteria you need to be, to be meet to be eligible for dual credit. So students need to complete the entire Colin College admissions process. They're going to fill out a real college application. Again, remember they're real. They're going to be a real college student in these classes. Um, so they have to fill out a real college application for Colin. We'll talk more about that in a moment and go through that admissions process of filling it out and submitting it and being accepted, et cetera. The permission, there must be permission obtained from the high school counselor before enrollment. So we want to make sure, again, that academically and with the goals that every student have, that um, it makes sense for them to take a dual credit class and your high school counselor can help you make that decision. Um, and also just if it will logistically, if it will fit in your schedule to take a certain class that you really want to take, or if there might be another option that would work better for your schedule or to help you meet your graduation requirements for high school, et cetera. Um, so it's an important part. We have a permission form that we'll talk more about in a moment to get that permission. Uh, you have to meet college readiness standards as defined by the Texas Success Initiative uh, or the TSI. You might have heard of the TSI before. Uh, that's a standardized test, kind of like the SAT or the ACT that we have here in Texas. And it just helps us measure and determine if a student is academically ready to take the college level class. That's how we um, measure that, that criteria. Um, again, we'll talk about all of this in more detail in just a moment, but our students, we want all of our students to be college ready. We don't want any student to sign up for a dual credit class and they're just super overwhelmed and discouraged about taking college classes or other advanced classes in the future. So we want everyone to have a positive experience and that can help with that. Uh, students also need to meet high school and Colin College academic requirements to continue in the dual credit program. So um, a lot of the classes that we have in order to get college and high school credit for completing the dual credit class, you might need to take um, two semesters of a class. So part one of a class in the fall semester and the second part of a class or the second um, step of meeting that requirement in the second semester. Uh, kind of like your other high school classes, right? In most cases, you can't take just one semester of something with a few exceptions. Um, so if you, for your dual credit classes, if you fail one semester of a class that requires two semesters to get credit, you will not be allowed to continue and take the second semester of that same class. 
and uh, you would need to meet with your counselor and figure out a new plan to help you uh, meet your, your graduation goals. Okay. So our dual credit offerings, we offer um, usually the same or very similar options pretty much every year. There's sometimes some tweaks here and there, but this is what we expect to have next year. So we have composition one and two, world lit, US history one and two, federal government, principles of economics. And then we have some more on the next slide. College algebra, pre-cal, statistics, Calc 3, differential equations, and biology. So all of these classes on these last, on these two slides here, they're all offered um, at Plano Senior. So these dual credit classes, you're not going to the, the calling campus to take these classes during the school year. These are, you sign up for them, talk to your counselor, and we get you signed up and everything. And it will just be built into part of your regular school schedule during the day. Um, so again, we want to make sure that you're aware of that. For these classes, you don't need to go anywhere. They're transferable. They're general classes that you need to take pretty much no matter what your major is or whatever path you're taking in the future. So it makes them really excellent options for that. All right. Um, we also have some technical campus offerings. So these are our industries programs. If you remember at the very beginning, um, we had we had mentioned that you, it's possible to graduate high school with a whole professional certificate through the dual credit program. Um, this is an option that is only for incoming 11th graders. You have to start the two-year program. Um, that's why we have that, that rule here. So we have biomedical equipment technology, electronic engineering technology, industrial automation, computer networking, computer-aided drafting, construction management, HVAC, and welding. All of those are programs that you can take um, at, and these are at the tech campus. So um, Plano ISD does provide busing to students that participate. So you don't have to have your own car or your own transportation for these. Um, so Plano does provide busing to get to the Allen Technical Campus and you would have extra time built into your schedule. So it's a big commitment um, because it's a big commitment in your schedule of what classes you can take in high school. And it is, again, a two-year program in order to get that certificate. So um, many of the, these courses are specialized programs. And if you don't already know what you want to do after high school, or at least that you want to work with these programs immediately after graduating, um, then you might want to consider other options. Or if you aren't sure and you think it's a possibility, talk to your counselor and see if that might make sense for you. And if it's a possibility for your schedule. Again, the scheduling can be tricky for these. All right, so if you've decided or if you do decide that dual credit makes sense for you and you would like to enroll, then there's a few steps and we're gonna go over each step in detail. So as we mentioned earlier, you have to apply for admissions to Collin College, fill out the real college application for Collin and you do that and apply at applytexas.org. That's the only place you have to apply, it's free. So one, apply for admission. Step two, is complete assigned holds. Step three is meet TSI eligibility, if applicable. And then step four is pay for your classes after you have been enrolled. So we'll go to step one and talk more about applying and what is involved with that. So um, you can go ahead and apply. Uh, applications are already open for summer and for fall classes. And again, you complete that application at Looks like she she she's a little frozen. Give us just a moment. Your counselor to make sure dual credit's a good option for you. Um, but as far as enrollment goes and signing up for classes, you have to apply.
All right, application tips. I have, if you're having trouble um, with any of the application process, I'll just start with this. I have a step-by-step -step guide that has screenshots and kind of all this information that is on this slide and more. Um, and I'm happy to email that out and uh, help anyone who needs, has specific questions with this as well. Some of them can, can feel a little tricky sometimes. So you need to create an account at applytexas.org. And it's very important that you use, the student uses a personal email address to set up this account. Um, if you use your school district email address, then if you switch school districts and you move or after you graduate high school, you're going to lose access to that email account and you won't be able to get back into your Apply Texas account, which you don't want to lose access to. If you want to apply to another school in Texas or edit any um, applications or things like that, you want to make sure you have access to be able to do that. Um, so you're going to set up your account. It's going to send you an email and verify your account. And then you're going to click start new application. Um, kind of the first page, some of these can be a little bit tricky. It looks simple, but sometimes you might be like, well, this seems too easy, or this doesn't exactly make sense to me. So once you start a new application, you're going to select two-year community college. That's what you're looking for, two-year community college. Um, you're going to select Collin College, and in parentheses it says McKinney, but that's the only Collin College application. So don't worry about that. It says McKinney in parentheses. It's good for all Collin campuses, including dual credit program. So Collin College, and then under your application type, you're going to select dual credit. The other option, I think it says new or two-year college student. Um, I think those are the only two options. So you want to make sure that you select dual credit. All right. Um, this whole application is going to take you, if you have everything, all that information at hand that you might need, it'll take you 15 or 20 minutes to fill out. There's no essays. There's no teacher recommendations. You don't even have to upload any test scores when you're applying or anything like that. You just fill out the information, so 15 or 20 minutes to do that, and then you submit the application, and you'll know you successfully submitted it um, when you get a congratulations page, and there will be a little confetti that comes down at the top of the page. Uh, make sure that you fill everything out correctly, and all of your addresses are correct, because your uh, residency and your tuition rate is based on how you fill out this application. Um, so if you accidentally put the wrong address or something like that, you might not pay the correct tuition amount and you would pay more than you needed to. So make sure that that's there. Um, after you submit the application, again, 15 or 20 minutes in most cases, fill it out, submit it. Um, you will hear back from Colin via email in usually three to five business days, sometimes a little faster than that. Not usually slower, but only when it's super, super busy would it be slower than that. Most of the time, it's less than a week. Um, you'll get an email back from them, from Colin, saying, yay, congratulations, welcome to Colin. And it'll have some login information with your student account there, how to log in and um, look at other information that we'll talk about in a second that you'll need, holds and things like that. And you'll also get your CWID number your Cougar Web ID number. Um, and you need that to do the whole rest of the application process. So that's why it's so important to make sure you apply before trying to do other steps, all right? So usually within a week of submitting the application, you'll get that username and login information to move on to the next steps. Okay, um, one of the questions in the application, it, also, it does ask when your graduation date is. You can just put the, depending on what grade you're in, um, you can put these as your graduation dates. It may ask for a specific day of the week. You can just put the beginning or the end of the month. Any of that is fine. Okay, what is Cougar Web? So after you get that email of, yay, welcome to call and congratulations, here's your login information. Again, usually less than a week. Um, that login information will help you get into Cougar Web. And Cougar Web is the online student portal 
that has all of the information and access that you need to do basically everything you need to do to be a Collins student. So there's some online trainings that you'll need to do. Um, your call-in email can be accessed this way. If you want to pay your tuition online instead of going somewhere in person, you do it through your Cougar web portal. Um, check your grades, your class schedule, and much more. All of that is through Cougar web. All right, removing holds, step two. So step one, um, You've already, you've talked to your counselor, you know that you want to do dual credit, it's a good fit for you. You fill out the application and you have been admitted and you get that login information. All right, so step two, we're going to start removing holds. Um, holds are anything that prevents you from being able to enroll or do other things with your call and account. So you might think of it kind of like, if you go to the library and you forget to turn a book you checked out in, they might put a hold on your account and you'll have like a five cent fine or 10 cent fine or however much. Um, and you can't check out a new book until you return the old book, right? So you have a step you need to complete before you can do anything else. That's what a hold is. Uh, so each admission step is listed as a hold, just so we know that you didn't forget to do anything. So all of these steps are necessary to be enrolled in your classes. Okay, high school approval. So we talked about earlier, um, we need your high school and your counselor to approve all of your classes, all of your dual credit, including concurrent enrollment classes. We have to have their permission to make sure it, it's a good fit for you, that it works with your schedule, um, it's not gonna, mess with your high school graduation plan, anything like that. Um, and we have to have that written approval from your high school as well, usually via email, to make any changes to your dual credit classes. So if you need your schedule changed because you need this, you want to switch a different class to a different period, um, we would have to have an email or written permission from your counselor to do that. Okay, the permission form. This is how we get permission from your, your counselor to sign you up for classes. So all of our dual credit students have to complete the call and college admissions application and get that ID number that we've talked about already several times. So after you've applied and been admitted and get that email, yay, here's your login information and your student ID number, your CWID number. You have to have that before you can fill out this permission form. That ID number goes on the top of that uh, first line next to your name. Um, so this form is going to be completed. It's just a one-page form. If you're under 18 years old, then uh, we need a student signature, a parent or guardian signature. If you're 18 or over, we only have to have a student signature. So student signature, parent or guardian signature, and we have to have a signature from your high school counselor on this. Um, at the top, you'll see the very, very first line there. It says academic year 2023 to 2025. So um, previously, we've had to have students fill out a new permission form every year or sometimes every semester. And this is just preventing that. So now we just have a one page permission form. And you're going to put what years you're, you're going to be at Plano Senior. Um, so 2023 to 2025 or 2024 to 2025, whatever it is for you, you'll put that however long you plan to be at Plano Senior, right? Depending on your grade. So you'll put that there. Everyone needs to fill out the permission form before we can enroll you in your classes. And you won't have to fill it out again in the future after you fill this out anymore. Okay, so earlier we talked a little bit about the TSI. So it's designed to measure your college readiness, specifically in reading, writing, and math. So those are the three subjects covered by the TSI. Um, it's used as how we uh, decide which course you can be placed in. Um, and in college, for college courses as well, it determines what level you can start out in for college classes. So students have to be college ready in English, 
sorry, reading and writing, that kind of English language arts score for most of the courses. So we'll talk more about um, some waivers and other test scores you can use for this, but you have to have um, the reading and writing score high enough for most of dual, the dual credit classes. The, you only need um, math scores that meet the TSI criteria we look for if you're taking a math dual credit class or biology for dual credit specifically. Okay. Ms. Lopez, can I ask a couple application questions? Yes, yes, of course. Too far? Um, sure. These were a couple questions that I did not know the answer to. Um, yeah. The first one, when they do the Apply Texas application, what degree do they choose when applying? It asks them yes. to select a degree. Yes, great question. Um, so you can select any degree. If you already know or have an idea of what major you might want to do in the future, you can select that. If you're not sure, you can select any option that looks good to you in that moment. Um, it really doesn't make a big difference. It's just a required portion part of the application. Um, and you can always go in and change it. It's not anything that's committing you to doing that track or to that major saying, yes, I'm definitely going to go to Colin and that's what I'm going to study. It's very non-committal. Um, it's just a required part of the application. Okay. And then if they are um, enrolling for, if they want to do a summer course, what year application do they complete? They're going to do an application for summer 2023. Okay. That will be the term that they select. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Great questions. Okay, so TSI exemptions. You do not necessarily have to take the actual TSI test if you have other qualifying test scores from other standardized tests. A lot of students have already taken these tests, which make it a little bit easier um, than having to take or retake the TSI in some cases. So uh, we can accept SAT scores and we can also accept ACT scores. And we have the minimum scores necessary listed here. Um, we, you'll notice at the bottom for the SAT and ACT specifically, Partial exemption, so like I was mentioning earlier, if most of our classes only require you to have a high enough reading or writing score or English score in order to take them. The only ones you need a math score for uh, that meet the minimum requirement is if you're taking a math dual credit class or biology specifically in most cases, okay? Um, but if you're using SAT or ATT, you may need to meet the required composite score necessary. So you'll see for the ACT, we have that listed there. Um, so for the SAT and the ACT, you have to send official scores to Colin if you decide you want to use your scores from the SAT or ACT to qualify. So that means you would have to go on your College Board account, the account you made where you can see your scores and where you signed up to take the test. You would go on there and send an official copy through your College Board account directly to Colin. I think it costs about $5 to do that. So if you decide you want to use your SAT or ACT scores, that those are the scores that meet the minimum requirements for you. Um, that's the process. So you would go on your College Board account, make sure they meet the minimum scores required listed here, and um, then you would send an official copy of those scores to Colin through your College Board account. And Kenzie, I'm going to add this. If you are a current, if you or your child is a current junior, juniors will all be taking the official SAT here at Plano Senior um, next month in March. And if you're a junior who's going to take a Collin College class in their senior year, I highly recommend just going ahead and listing Collin on test day and having those scores sent directly to Collin. Then you don't have to worry about paying. You know, it's it's the easiest way to do it. So on SAT test day, have your score sent directly to Colin. Definitely. I think that's great advice. Save yourself some time and five dollars in the future. So that covers what we just said. We have to have that official score for the ACT or the SAT. All right. Um, if you have not yet taken or won't take or whatever, uh, you don't have scores for the ACT or SAT, or they're not high enough, 
Um, there's other options. We can also take the ACT Aspire, which is not super common. Most people don't take that. Um, but we can also use scores for the PSAT and for STAR tests. So these are the easiest scores to use if you if your scores meet the minimum qualifying score listed here. These are the easiest to, to use. Um, so you don't have to take the TSI because your counselor can just tell me what your PSAT or STAR scores are. You don't have to send any official copies anywhere. Your counselor can just let me know what your score is and that's all. Um, so for the PSAT, that minimum is a 460 for reading and writing. And again, that will cover you for almost all of our dual credit classes. And then the math is a 510. And then the star is for English 2, it's a 4,000 or higher. And then for Algebra 1, it's a 4,000. And this is combined. So 4,000 and at least a final grade of 70% in Algebra 2. All right, so you have to have both of those to qualify for math with the star score. And again, no, you don't have to go any, on any websites or anything like that. Um, in most cases, your counselor can just tell me what those scores are. So your counselor, again, will let me know what those scores are. Um, there's more information on our dual credit website if you would like to look at the details of that. Um, but those TFI waivers save you a lot of headaches if you already have qualifying scores. So again, PSAT, STAR, ACT, SAT, we can take all scores from all of those um, if you have qualifying scores that meet those minimum requirements, okay? Um, if you do not, have qualifying scores. So maybe you took those tests and your scores didn't quite meet the minimum requirements, or for some reason you don't have scores or can't get access to those scores. Um, you can also take the TSI. You can do that after you've been accepted to Colin. You can sign up and take the TSI at Colin, pretty much any available testing center. You can go online here. Um, you can just Google. Collin College TSI or go to Collin's website and type in the search bar TSI and you sign up on their website using that student ID number that you got when you were accepted to Collin. Um, so you fill out, there's a little survey that you fill out called the pre-assessment activity and you uh, can sign up through Collin there for the TSI and you choose what location you want to do it at. Um, if you need to do just the math portion, just the English and writing portion or the entire TSI based on your needs. Maybe you had a high enough PSAT score, but your math didn't quite cut it. So you need to take just the TSI math portion. You can do that. You don't have to take the whole thing um, if your other score was high enough. You can pay at the cashier's office in person or pay online. If you take the TSI in person at Colin at a testing location on campus at Colin, it's $29. Um, there is online testing offered. You can take it wherever you want to. And I believe it's, yeah, it's about $40. So it's a little bit more. Um, I really suggest, I only suggest the online option if it's like absolutely what you have to have to do to take the TSI, just because sometimes there can be issues with like your internet, maybe your internet goes out during the test or um, you don't have a laptop with a webcam on it or like little brother, little sister comes in and bumps you all the time and may, that might distract you from being able to do your best on the test, things like that. So unless you really have to, or that's just what's gonna work best for you, I suggest taking it in person, but there is an online option if that's better. And again, uh, you can go to the TSI testing webpage on Colin's website if you wanna see more details about how to do that. And I'm happy to help you sign up as well. Okay, so um, bacterial meningitis vaccination. If you are taking any classes at a Colin campus, so that might be a summer class, that might be um, one of our industries classes that's at the Tech campus, the technical campus in Allen, that's usually the only two reasons our students might need to, our dual credit students would need to take uh, this vaccine. So if you are, taking a dual credit class or a concurrent enrollment class at any Colin campus, 
you have to have either a proof of a bacterial meningitis vaccination within the past five years or documentation of an exemption. So you don't have to take the vaccine or get the vaccine. Um, that is required. It's a requirement for all college students through the age of about 25 in the state of Texas. So uh, if you're taking any on campus at Collin campus classes, that is a requirement. So either proof of vaccination or proof of exemption from that vaccination for bacterial meningitis. Most of our dual credit students don't need to worry about this. It may show up as a hold on your account. If you're not taking a class, so an industries class or a class during the summer that's on campus at Collin, you don't need to worry about it if all you're taking, if your dual credit classes are just at Plano Senior High School, don't worry about it. Okay, another very important hold. This is like one of the easiest ones to just do immediately. Um, the mandatory campus safety training. So students have to complete this before they can be registered for any classes. It's one of those mandatory holds. And it is on your Cougar web account. Uh, this shows you how to access that. It's on like the main page of your Cougar web account always. And you'll see there, there's a mandatory campus safety training. And then I believe everyone also needs to complete the mandatory online orientation. That's right below that big yellow arrow and below the red box there. Um, there are videos and like little things that you read. It doesn't take super long. So you watch the videos or read anything that pops up and then take a little quiz at the end. Uh, just so you're aware of what campus safety looks like at Collin and what uh, resources you have access to at Collin, things like that. Okay, if you're not sure where to go to find these holds or to see what holds you have left or like what even is a hold and how do I get rid of it, um, there's a place on your profile and you'll log into your Cougar Web account through the Colin website. And there's on your profile, there's a little button that says holds and there's one that says like check my holds also. Um, you can click on that, it'll list all of the holds you have. And it also there's steps listed of how to remove all of the most common holds. So that can be helpful. And again, I can help with anything if you have any questions about holds. Um, there's this hold resolution guide. Again, this could be super helpful. This is on Collins website. If you're not sure what a hold is or what it means, those are some of the most common ones. You just click on it and see, oh, that's these are the steps that I take to remove this from my account. Um, one hold that will remain on everyone's account until they graduate or right before graduation. Um, everyone will have a hold on their account that says dual credit permission form hold. So that does not mean, I know what it sounds like, I wish we could call it something else, but we can't change the title of it. Um, but that hold is just their dual credit permission hold. That doesn't mean that I didn't get your permission form from your counselor. It just is a hold there. That's how we identify dual credit students. And it uh, prohibits you from being able to drop and enroll in college classes by yourself. So I um, sign all of our students up. I enroll all of our students manually for dual credit and concurrent enrollment classes until you graduate from high school. So that hold will remain on your account until you graduate. It's not going to go away. And and it also does not mean that I didn't get your permission form or that you need to submit a new one. Okay, one more thing about holds. Um, I have had some students who just within the past couple weeks have applied to Colin and been accepted for specifically for the fall semester. And when they go on their account to check their holds, there's nothing that pops up yet. You don't have an option to check holds for fall 2023 yet. Um, that should pop up for everyone soon, if it has not already. And if you, after like a few days from today, if you're having that issue still, please send me an email and I will reach out to um, our IT department and call and make sure that everyone is able to get their holds, access their holds. Okay. All right, registration. So you've done step one. You've made sure dual credits are right for you. 
and you have applied and been accepted to Colin. You've done step two. You have checked all your holds and looked at everything and seen how to remove everything. And you've done all the steps or removed all the holds you need to. So step three is registration. So enrolling in the classes, actually signing up for the classes. So all students, like I just mentioned, all students will be registered by our P12 partnerships office. So in that case, I'm your, I'm your representative. I'm your counselor from our, our partnership office beginning last spring this or this past spring right now. Um, so your high school, Plano Senior or Clark or Vines, wherever you're coming from, um, we have a big list of students, all of the students who want to enroll in dual credit. Um, we have your information and I make sure that I have everything I need from everyone, that you've done a permission form, that you've completed all your holds, that I know what classes you want to be in, in what terms, so if you want to do it in the summer or fall or in the spring, et cetera. I, I get your information from the, from the counselors, make sure everything's done. And then I manually register all of our dual credit and concurrent enrollment students. So again, you will not register or enroll in the classes yourself, even for summer classes. Um, I do that for everyone. And that also includes dropping classes. You can't drop the classes just by going into your Cougar Web account and doing it yourself. I have to do that for you and make sure that we have permission from your counselor and you have a plan in place for that. So students are responsible for looking at your schedule on Cougar Web after you're enrolled and paying for your classes. So you'll just wanna double check your schedule after you're enrolled, after I sign everybody up for their classes. I'll send out an email and you'll also get an automated email from Colin to your Colin email. And uh, it'll say, okay, you've been signed up for these classes. Please make sure that you um, pay for them, that everything looks correct by this date. And the date will be listed there in the email. Um, you'll just double check all of that looks correct to you. If you have any questions, you can email me. Um, if there's any issues, we'll get it taken care of. And then you will submit your payment. And again, you can just do that online through the Cougar Web Portal. Um, students may not be added back into dual credit courses if you are dropped for non-payment in some cases. So if that deadline in the email, I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, I believe it's the towards the end of May for fall classes. Um, it'll be in the email. It'll say, please make sure you pay for your classes by this date. Make sure that's done. Um, if you miss that, whatever that payment deadline date is, and you do not pay, you're automatically going to be dropped from your dual credit classes. And sometimes we can add you back, sometimes we cannot add you back. So please be very mindful of that payment deadline. Okay, more about payment. So tuition. Uh, we kind of looked at that, the cost breakdown at the very beginning. Here's more detail about that tuition rate. So currently, as of right now and through the end of the summer, uh, it is $62 per credit hour for students who live in Collin County. So that is $186 for a three credit hour course. It is $117 per credit hour for students who are still considered Texas residents but they are out of county. So you do not live in Collin County. So that's $351 for one class. Sometimes the three credit hour uh, term that can be confusing for people. So three credit hours doesn't mean you're going for three hours per day. Um, again, that's just how many credits, college credits you're going to get for completing that course. Most of our, our dual credit classes are like, it's you know, a normal class schedule, an hour or so, and it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, something along those lines, or Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, most of the classes are about that, and most of them are three credit hours. So when it says a three credit hour course, that's one class, and you pay $62 per credit hour. Um, there is a $2 student records fee also on top of that, so not too bad. 
Um, I believe from last year to this year, the tuition went up $5 per credit hour. So I expect, I don't have the numbers yet, but I expect after summer in the fall, for the fall classes, that number will probably, tuition will probably also be raised uh, another couple of dollars per credit hour, but I don't know for sure yet if it will raise or by how much, but I would suspect a couple of dollars per credit hour for the fall. And, and I just, I do want to butt in and say we have a small number of Plano ISD that's in Dallas County. Um, if your student is a Plano ISD student, they don't have to do the out of county. We send like a letter to Colin so that you're not paying the 351. If you, there's a little part of Plano Senior that dips down below George Bush and is in Dallas County. So I don't, if I have any of those people, I don't want them to panic. Yeah. Um, I will also add if you are considered an international student or an out of state student, you can still take dual credit classes. I believe it is 170 something dollars per credit hour. So it is a, a higher rate, but you still can participate in dual credit. Um, also, you'll see at the very bottom here, if you are eligible for free or reduced lunch through the school, then you will have your tuition um, waived by the college. So you don't have to worry about paying for any of your tuition if you qualify for free or reduced lunch through the school. Okay, so payment instructions. You will log into your Cougar Web account. Again, we keep coming back to that Cougar Web account it's where everything is, it's your hub. Um, so go to your Cougar Web account under your student quick links bar. Uh, there's Cougar Pay. So this is on like the very main page of your Cougar Web account. And it's called Cougar Pay. It says manage payments and refunds. And you just click on that. And the correct amount for any tuition or fees that you have due should be listed there after you have been enrolled in your classes. And again, you'll get an email reminding you, hey, you've been enrolled. You can check Cougar Web now and pay any tuition or fees that you might have. Okay, resources. So at the beginning I mentioned, and we've said a couple of times, you're, as a dual credit student, you're considered a real college student at Collins. So you have access to all of the same resources that any other student has access to. So we'll talk about what some of those resources are. So we have, first of course, we have our dual credit website. That's accessible to anyone. Um, this is a great resource if you ever have general questions. We have a whole page of like frequently asked questions and a lot of our forms are listed there. If you got an email one time, but you can't find it, you might check there and see. Um, dates, important dates are listed there and we keep that updated. If you ever need to find my email and you can't address and you can't find it, it's listed there as well. So that's the dual credit website is a good resource for that. Um, you'll also, as a dual credit student, have access to our access office. So what is the access office? It is the accessibility office of, of Colin. And so it provides equal access to educational and to the educational opportunities and services for students with disabilities through academic accommodations for anyone who qualifies. So this is really important. If you receive accommodations, academic accommodations, at um, Plano, so at Plano Senior or Clark or Vines, through your school, you have to apply separately for accommodations for dual credit classes. So the school, uh, your, your high school and Colin College, they don't talk to each other about any accommodations or accessibility options that you have. You have to do those two things separately. Um, I included here our representative, Tara Franklin. She's our access advisor for all of our dual credit students. So you can call or email her if you have questions or if you would like to pursue accommodations or other accessibility options. And she can usually, it's just whatever same um, paperwork or forms or uh, documentation you have that you use for the school district accommodations. Usually that same thing is just fine to use for um, 
our accommodations that we have available through Colin. So to receive accommodations, you have to self-identify. Again, we don't have communication from your high school uh, about whether or not you receive accommodations or what they are from, uh, from the school or from the school district. So you have to be the one to reach out to Tara or to the access office and say, hey, I would like to receive accommodations from Colin. What can I do? Or what, you know, what do you need? So there's uh, an application and you'll send that to the access office. It's on their website. Uh, Tara can also email it to you or the access office can email it to you directly. And you'll have to provide some type of documentation. Again, whatever you use for the school district is usually just fine. And you have to request accommodations every single semester. So, um, You'll just submit a new application. You don't always need new documentation, just a new application every semester saying, yes, I still want accommodations this semester. Um, even if you don't think you might need them or you're like, oh, well, I've used them sometimes in the past, but not that much, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I would encourage you to make sure, just go ahead and uh, get those accommodations in place just in case you decide you do want to use them. Uh, with this being a college class, if this is the first college level class you've taken before, or if it's just a different subject than other classes, you, college level classes you've taken before, um, you might find yourself wanting those accommodations more than you did in other classes. So uh, you can, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and get those accommodations set up each semester, even if you're not sure if you'll use them or not. Other campus resources, all of this is free. So we have a career service center. If you'd like to look more into uh, what type of career or jobs you might want to do in the future, or if you already know what you want to do or be, and you're not sure of the path, the academic path to get there, if you could just do a professional certificate, or if you need an associate's degree, or if you need a bachelor's or master's or doctorate or whatever, the Career Service Center can help you with that and kind of make a path for you, some goals. Um, the Fitness Center, so all of our campuses have gyms or most all of our larger campuses do. And you can uh, go and use those whenever they're open. There are libraries at every campus that you have access to. And those are in-person libraries and uh, there are digital op book options as well. And, research articles and things like that. There's a math lab and a writing center specifically to help you with those subjects. And there's free tutoring, um, free, free, free tutoring. If you've ever pursued tutoring options before, just needed some extra help, sometimes that can be really expensive. So you can get tutored up to, I believe, three times a week, one-on-one -on -one with, uh, usually it's a professor doing the tutoring someone who is an expert in what they're talking about, and they can help you in any subject that you would like tutoring in. Uh, so that can be a really great resource, especially if you maybe you're, you're feeling the difficulty of the class that you're taking. That's a really great resource, that tutoring center. And they also do, you can go in camp or uh, in person to any campus to get that tutoring, or you can also set up a virtual appointment and do it via video chat. And there's many more things. All right, so that's me and my email address is listed here. Um, again, I'm here. If you ever have any general questions about Colin or, you know, college or how things transfer or anything dual credit, things like that, I'm a great resource, but especially for all of these, this dual credit support for applying and enrolling and what classes are what and um, how do I do this? I'm getting this error message and I don't know how to do it with this hold. Yeah, I'm a great resource for that and I would love to help you. And if I can't fix it for you, I'll certainly get you in contact with someone who can. All right. So I think that's my spiel. Oh, we have one more. I forgot. Oh. <laughs> you want to do that one real quick? Okay. We'll do it just, just fast. Um, textbooks are a part of the whole college experience and that goes for dual credit as well. And uh, we have a, a Colin bookstore that you can get your books through. And this just shows you some information about how to access that. You can look it up through 
the courses or if you just know what book it's listed under or the um the name of the course or the book or whatever you can look all of that up as well okay now i'm really done <laughs>